Good afternoon, America. Today is the Sabbath, September the 16th, and it is approximately 12.04 p.m. Because Psalms 136 is so long, and so is our reading for today, I'm going to just read Psalms 134. We've done it before, and it's okay to read it twice. It has three verses in it. And it says, Praise the Lord. It's a psalm of ascent, and it, it is an anonymous song. Praise the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, who minister by night in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, who minister by night in the house of the Lord, to lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. Three. May the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. Yes, hallelujah, praise God. May the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. That is all three verses of that beautiful short song. We were supposed to read Amos, but as the Lord does, he always dictates what we should be telling his people. So, he directed me to 1 Kings 13. Okay. Did we get an uh, introduction into 1 Kings? Let's see. I can always tell. Yes, we have had a introduction into first kings and because the story is so long we're going to go ahead on and go straight into the reading we're going to be reading from first kings 13 it's a very long um chapter it has 34 verses it is laced with gold for prophecy and red for discipleship and we have a few verses of black for sin, verse 18 and 19, 33 and 34. And we have a few powerful verses of green for love. And we have one verse of orange for your faith. And we have an enormous amount of red for discipleship. In this um, chapter also, uh, we have some uppercase lettering emphasizing importance in the principle in that verse, which would be verse 2, 3, um, verse 9, verse 17, <clears throat> verse 20, 21, and 22 are uppercase lettering. Please pay attention to that. Um, other than that, this is about an anonymous prophet. In the book, in the Bible, there are many prophets which we know their names. Our Lord Jesus Christ, John the Baptist, Jeremiah, Jonah, um, just many, many, uh, Moses, Aaron. All of these are known, Samson, Samuel, all of these, David, all of these are known prophets. Some of these prophets are consecrated from the womb that will be jesus christ our lord john the baptist uh jeremiah samuel uh, these are prophets that were consecrated from the womb joaz who becomes a king is also uh consecrated from the womb and some of these prophets they're they're um their birth is announced. Jesus Christ's birth was announced. Uh, uh, John the Baptist's birth was was announced. Uh, Joas, which we're going to read about today, he becomes a king at a very young age, and he is also uh, hidden for a short while before he uh, takes hold of the kingship. He is hidden for a while by those that were designated to protect the very young child king. So uh, we're going to be reading about an anonymous prophet. The book, the Bible, 
which stands for basic information before leaving Christ, is laced with anonymous prophets who did very, very important jobs. They're anonymous because we don't know their names, but we do know their deeds. And this particular story has a lot to do with following the instructions of God. If God gives you a set of instructions and you fail to follow those instructions uh, to the letter, there is a severe price to pay for that. Now, it doesn't apply to the angels of God because they never um, fail in their duties. It's generally men, uh, the human, they fail in their duties, and it's generally them who uh, disobey the orders given unto God. But the angels are not like man. They're not mortals like us, so they never fail in their duties. If a disaster comes, and there are two types of angels that are sent to the world. Those angels that are to save someone, those are the ones that usually you hear about how they were able to um, survive a disaster. And then there are another set of angels, and they come to pick you up. So those are the dead bodies that you find, that the world finds. Um, but either way, whether they're pickup angels or saving angels, uh, they never fail at their job. But because we are human and mortals, we can at times not follow the instructions of God according to the way he gives them to us. And when we do uh, fail in our task, we pay a very, very serious price for that. And we will find that in this particular story. Okay. Um, I want to give you some information about certain things that you will hear about in this story. Um, you will hear about Sepulcher. A Sepulcher is a place of burial. You literally use a place of burial. Genesis 23 uh, six, it says, hear us, my Lord. My Lord will be a respectful uh, way of addressing an individual or a stranger. You would say in the biblical, in the biblical times, you would say, my Lord, to a stranger. Um, in the biblical times, a wife would address her husband as my Lord. Uh, anybody in any authoritative position will be addressed as my Lord. So in, in the Bible, my Lord, the word Lord is written in two forms. It is written in lowercase L-O-R-D and it's written in uppercase L-O-R-D. When you see it in the Bible written in lowercase L-O-R-D, that means that individual is speaking to a man. Um, being that man, uh, 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 an individual uh, of authority or a prophet or a master, he will be addressed as my Lord, and that word will be written in lowercase l-o-r-d. Now, uh, in the New Testament, you'll see it a lot, uh, as well as in the Old Testament, when they're speaking about the, when, when the prophets are prophesizing about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is then written in uppercase lettering L-O-R-D. Um, that means you're talking about the Lord himself. Uh, in the New Testament, it is the same thing when, when addressing uh, Jesus Christ. That word is written in uppercase lettering. Or when you're saying Lord God, it is also written in uppercase lettering so that the reader knows that Okay, this is referring to our Savior, or this is referring to God Himself. Uh, if it's written in other in lower case, it's referring to a man. Um, so those are the two different ways you can see 
that the word Lord used and you being used in the biblical term. Um, also, a serpenture was a place of barrier. And here in Genesis 23, 6 says, Hear us, my Lord. Uh, this is a person talking to Abraham because in Genesis 23, Sarah's death and burial is happening in Genesis 23. So they're talking to Abraham and they say, Hear us, my Lord, thou art a mighty prince among us. In the choice of our superchies, um, bury thy dead. None of us shall withhold from thee his superchi, but that thou mayest bury thy dead. And it says, it says, I, I missed the thing. It says, Hear us, my Lord, thou art a mighty priest among us in the choice of our suffrage. So he wants, he's saying that you are a very um, important person among us and you are to pick among the best of the burial plots here. But Adam, uh, Abraham decides to buy a piece of property and bury his wife there. I uh, that was in the King James version and the New International Version, which I'm very careful when I use it. It says, "Sir, listen to us. You are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead in the choices of in the choices, which is the best of our tomb. None of us will refuse you his tomb for burying your dead." And it says that here, none of us shall withhold from thee his sepulchre, but that thou mayest bury thy dead. That means the same thing. We will not refuse you to use our burial ground. Okay, you hear Je Jehoabam. Jehoabam means may the people increase. Certain names have a meaning to them. May the people increase is what Jehoabam means. He was a king. He was the son of Nabat in 1 Kings 11, 26. He rebels against Solomon in 1 Kings 11, 26 uh, to 28. He, uh, Abaha, Abehe, prophesies concerning in 1 Kings 11, 29 to 39. He flees to Egypt in 1 Kings 11, 40. Uh, recalled May King in 1 Kings 12, 1 to 3, uh, verse 12 and verse 20. He perverts the re true religion in 1 Kings 12, 25 to 33. He casts out, he cast the Levites out, which are the selected priests for God. Those were his selected priests. They were all Levites, whether they were priests in the sanctuary or whether they were at the porters, uh, at the gates of the city, the porters were often Levites. That was their job also. So he, re, he, he casts them out. So you could tell by what I'm telling you about this individual that he was an evil king. And Second Chronicles 11, 14, he, re, he is rebuffed by a man of God in 1 Kings 13, 11, and 12. He leads people astray in 1 Kings 13, 33 to 34. His wife consults Ahijah uh, in 1 Kings 14, uh, 1 to 18. He wars with Abajam in 1 Kings 15, 7. He ranges for 22 years in 1 Kings 14, 20, and he is struck by God in 2 Chronicles 13, 20. So you have a little bit of information about Jeroboam, okay? Um... Now let's go into the reading, since you know a little bit about the character. Now the prophet here, I will be flip-flopping. Oh, we're still there. Thank you, Father. I will be, I'm going to usually have this on my right. Okay, so we will be flip-flopping. I will be flip-flopping from my book to this book, I always call it, and That's delicious, Father. Okay, so I'm going to be flip-flopping from this book to that book. And chapter 13 of 1 King, it talks about a man of God. Again, he's an anonymous 
prophet from Judea, prophesied jo Joash's birth. Okay, so certain prophets, their birth is prophesied. Like I said, our Lord Jesus Christ, John the Baptist, uh, Samuel, um, uh, Joaz, uh, Jeremiah, all of these are, are prophets that were consecrated from the womb, okay? So they were consecrated, designated unto God from the womb. And certain prophets become prophets sometime during their lifetime, uh, such as uh, Saul, who became Paul, and um, Jonah, uh, who tried to run from his uh, assignment. So certain prophets are holy from the womb, and others are holy when the Lord calls them. Okay, so this particular prophet is an anonymous prophet. He has no name, but we know that he is a prophet of the God of host. Okay, so a man of God from Judea prophesied jo jo uh, Josiah's birth. Also in this chapter, an old prophet lies to the man of God. And then also in this chapter, a lion kills the man of God. Okay, this man of God had gotten a set of instructions. And he went, He was doing well in, in obeying that which the Lord has given him, the instructions the Lord had given him, until he was on his way back home. Because he was told not to eat or drink in Bethel because the assignment was to go to Bethel and announce the birth of Josea, okay? But while he was there, he was not to eat anything. He was not to drink water. He was not, he was not to eat or drink water in Bethel, okay? Those were the instructions. The, the, and he was also told that he was not to return home the same route that he took to get to Bethel. So he was doing his job. He delivered the message. He, he got into a confrontation with Jer, uh, Jeroboam. And um, on his way home after the, uh, after the situation with Jeroboam, he was sitting under an oak tree, resting for a while. He had done what he was told. He was going and taking a different route, and that's when he ran into trouble. And in 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 Colossals, when I read that a couple of days to you, it tells us that we are never to lie to one another. Never. Okay? You ought to always tell your brother and sister the truth, even if it's something that you know they don't want to hear. Okay, so let's begin this, this uh, reading. And verse 1 to verse 5 is prophecy. Verse 2 is a very long verse, and it has a lot of uppercase lettering in it, and so does verse 3. Let's begin. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. So he was coming out of Judah, heading to Bethel. Very easy to understand so far. Okay, so behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Okay, two, and he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and say, O oh, altar, altar, thus saith the Lord. Now these words following are uppercase bold lettering. Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josea by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and the men's bones shall be burned upon thee. So he will be a man of God, and he will do away with many of the false prophets and their altars, and their altars will fall, burnt, and their ashes will fall to the ground. 
Okay, it says here, and upon thee he shall offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men bones shall be burned upon thee. Okay, so he will do away with much that offends God. All right, let's continue. Three, and he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Now, the next few words I speak are uppercase lettering. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. This is what will happen uh, as a sign that that which he said will come to pass. And shortly, it will come to pass very shortly within the next few verses. Okay, let me read it uh, too again. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and say, O oh, altar, altar, thus saith the Lord. Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burned upon thee. Three, and he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it, it shall be poured out. Four, and it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God. So he's, 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 he's standing nearby, and he's hearing that which the prophet is saying. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him, and his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up so that he could not pull it in again to him. So he went, the king went to put his hand out, to put his hand on the prophet, and the hand got stuck. It got stuck because he could not he could not control the hand. The hand stayed in the same position. It's like this. It stayed in the same position and he was unable to control that arm. Okay? Um, so I will read that again. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him, and his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up so that he could not pull it in against again to him. Five, the altar was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the psalm which the man had got of God had given by the word of the Lord. So as soon as he done that, the altar was rent where he was standing, and the ashes fell to the ground. Okay? Now here comes the king, and now he wants, he wants help from the prophet that he tried to put his hand on. He says, and the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, not my God, but your God, and pray for me that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besold the Lord. He, he begged God. He begged the Lord. And the king's hand was restored again, uh, it re was restored him again and became as it was before. Okay, so let's go here and read it from 1 to 6. The man of God from Judah. Of course, when I read it from this book, it's always going to be a lot faster. Okay. By the word of the Lord, a man of God came from Judah to Bethel as Jeroboam was standing by the altar to make an offering. Two, he cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord, O altar, altar, exclamation mark. This is what the Lord said. A son named Josiah will be born to the house of David. On you, he will sacrifice the priests of, of high prices who now make offerings here, and the human bones will be burnt on you. Three, the same day the man of God gave a sign. This is the sign of the Lord. This is the sign the Lord has declared. The altar will be split apart, and the ashes on it will be poured out. Four, when King Jeroboam heard what the man of God cried out against the altar at Bethel, he stretched out his hand from the altar and said, Seize him! Exclamation mark. 
But the hand he stretched out towards the man shivered up so that he could not pull it back. Five. Also, the altar was split apart and its ashes poured out according to the sign given by the man of God by the word of the Lord. Six. Then the king said to the man of God, Intercede with the Lord your God and pray for me that my hand may be restored. So the man of God interceded with the Lord, and the king's hand was restored, and it became as it was before. Okay, did we do seven? No, we did not. So we're going to go back here to seven. By the way, one to five was gold for prophecy. Six was uh, orange for your faith, and seven to 17 is red for discipleship. Pay attention. Um. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. So after after the the man of God prayed on, on his behalf, and his arm was restored, the king invited him to come to his home so that he can offer him a reward. But the man says to him, Even if you gave me half of your house, uh, I could, I would not eat or drink there. All right, let's read it. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. A. Hey, and the man of God said unto the unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thy house, I will not go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread or drink water in this place. Nine has uppercase words. I will let you know when we get there. For so was it charged me by the word of the Lord. So for so was it charged me. That means that that is his instruction by God. Okay. For so it was charged me by the word of the Lord and saying, here comes the uppercase lettering. Pay attention. Don't miss it. Eat no bread. This is all bold letterings. Eat no bread nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou comest. So he's telling God instructions for, to the prophet was not to eat any bread, not to drink any water, and not to go back home the same way he came to Bethel. So he had to take a different route going home. Okay, 10. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. 11. Now there dwell an old prophet in Bethel, and his son came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, the words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. So while he was uh, in the church, in the temple, he, there were some people there who happened to be sons of this old prophet. So the sons went home and told their father everything that had happened between the man of God and the king, word for word, because that's what it says here. Now there dwelled an old prophet in Bethel, and their sons came and told all the works that the man of God had done that day, the words which he had spoken unto the king. So that's word for word. Also, they shared with their father what had happened to his to the king and his arm, and how the prophet had interceded on his behalf, right? And how the king had invited the prophet to come to his house to get a reward and refresh himself. They share all of this with their father. I'll read it again. Now then dwell an old prophet in Bethel, and his son came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, and, and the words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. Okay, 12. And their father said unto them, what, what way went he? Which way did he go? That's what the father wanted to know. Which way did he go? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. So the sons were aware which direction the prophet was heading. Excuse me, father. 13. And he said unto his son, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon. 14. And went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oaf tree. An oaf, it says here. It doesn't say tree, it just says an oaf. So we all know it's a tree. 
okay, and went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oath. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that cometh from Judah? And he said, I am. Uh, 15. Then he said to unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. Okay, so this is the second invite. Okay, this is the second invite for him to do what God has told him he cannot do. You cannot eat bread. You cannot drink water uh, in Bethel. Um, <coughs> and you must go home a different direction. So he was heading home. He was heading home a different direction. He was on course so far until this old prophet shows up and lies to him. Okay, in order to get him to come, he lies to him, all right? And this is the lie he tells him. Then he said unto him, come home with me, verse 15. For those of you who are just joining us, we are in 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 15. Then he said unto him, come home with me and eat bread. 16, and he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread or nor drink water with thee in this place. So he was telling the man what he could not do. He could not eat bread. He could not drink water. He could not <coughs> go with him anywhere. So here comes the lie. 17, for it was said to me, by the word of the Lord. So he's telling the prophet, this is what the Lord said. I must not eat bread. I must not drink water. And I must not go with anyone. This is the command given to me by the Lord. Okay, so that's what he's saying here. It was said to me by the word of the Lord. And here comes the black bold lettering. Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that you thou cometh. Okay, this he shared with the with the old man, old prophet. Okay, here comes the lie, which is in my book is black. 18 and 19 is black. Okay, he says unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spack unto me by the word of the Lord. Oh my God, that was a lie. He lied to the prophet. An angel didn't come to him. His sons came to him and shared with him everything that had went on in the, in the church at Bethel. Okay, so it was no angel that came to him. And he lied to him to coach him to come follow him. So he said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee unto thy house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. Okay. 19. So he went back with him and did, not, and did eat bread in his house and drink water. Okay, so let's take it from here, from this book. And if any time this book says something that is not correct, America, I will let you know, because my spirit will let me know this is incorrect. Okay, so let's take it from seven. The king said to the man of God, come home with me and have something to eat, and I will give you a gift. Eight, but the man of God answered the king, even if you were to give me half your possessions, I will not go with you, nor would I eat bread or drink water here. Nine, for I was commanded by the word of God, you must not eat bread nor drink water or return by the way you came. Ten, so he took him, uh, he, so he took him another road and did not return by the way he had came to Bethel. 11. Now there was a certain old prophet living in Bethel whose sons came and told him all that the man of God had done there that day. He, oh, Father, you still have time. They also told their father what he had said to the king. 12. Their father asked them, which way did he go? And his son showed him which road the man of God from Judah had taken. So, 13. So he said to his son, saddle the donkey for me. And when they had saddled the donkey for him, he mounted it. 14. And rode after the man of God. 
He found him sitting under an oak tree. And I see here it says oak tree, but in the Bible it says sitting under an oak. So they added a word. And it is a sin to take away from these words or to add to it. So when I see something wrong, America, I point it out to you, okay? And asks, are you the man of God who came from Judah? I am, he replied, 15. So the prophet said to him, come home with me and eat. 16, the man of God said, I cannot turn back and go with you, nor can I eat bread or drink water with you in this place. 17, I have been told by the word of the Lord, you must not eat bread or drink water there or return by the way you came. Okay, 18. We're not going to finish this. We're going to do half of it today and half tomorrow. So we're going to stop at um, 19 where, when, when he told the lie. Okay. Uh, 18, 17, I have been told by the word of the Lord, you must not eat bread or drink water here or return by the way you came. 18, the old prophet answered, I too am a prophet as you are. And an angel came, said to me by the word of the Lord, bring him back with you to your house so that he may eat bread and drink water. But he was lying to him. 19. So the man of God, re God returned with him and ate and drank in his house. And that would be all for today. This is a very, very, very interesting um, story because it teaches us the importance of being obedient to the word of God. It teaches us that there is a terrible price to pay for disobeying disregarding um the words of god it teaches us that that which we do in our own accord that is against the wills of god that we will pay a terrible price for it and we are paying a price for it right now as we speak because the lord can cause that which we have been done away with to turn back against us this is why you see my brothers coming out of the closet they are coming out and not as one and two but in great numbers when was the last time you seen the Ku Klux Klan coming around having uh uh, 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 uh coming around and, and marching it's been years it's been years America Okay, but if you forsake God, he will take away that which man cannot give the earth peace on the peace, peace in the land. It's not something that man can create. Man cannot create peace, joy, happiness, protection, none of that. God gives us that. He gives us peace with our brothers, our neighboring brothers, whether it's another continent or our neighbor next door. He gives us joy and happiness and protection. But if we turn our backs on him and begin to do what we want to do, the way we want to do it, taking the word of God, perversing it to the core, taking that which God has made and making it into something it's not, there is a horrible price to pay. And this prophet will certainly pay the price for his disobedience the nations in the biblical time paid the price for their disobedience and the nations of this time because it is the same god because he does not change for anyone because he is a holy god we will have to pay for that which we which we are doing even up to the Supreme Court who may justify same-sex marriage. The God of, of, of Israel does not justify same-sex marriage. He made uh, the man and the woman. And a marriage is between two of the opposite sex. Marriage should be between two of the same nations. But we have so... Oh my God. We have... 
polluted this earth to the core that we are paying the price for it. And if you think that what's going on in Texas and that which is going on in Florida and that which is going on in Georgia will just be a one-time thing. No, America. It's going to get worse before it gets better because we can on our own repent from our sins and undo that which we have done and, and bring the nation back to God or he can do it by force. And when God does it by force, it's ugly. He can get ugly in the same way that he is a good God. He can be a terrible God indeed. He is a real holy God and he will be glorified by this nation one way or the or another. Now, we are at 19. Bless God. If I live and nothing happens, we will continue this story tomorrow because it's not one that we want to race through it. We want to Chew on these words slowly. In the meantime, may the peace of God be upon thee. May the protection of God surround thee. May the will of God come from thee. Until the next time, thank you for listening to us here at Spiritual Water. My name is Brenda Guerrero. I have been instructed to give you those emergency contacts for so many days. The time is up. I cannot give them to you anymore until after the first of the year. And then I will give it to, to you again to remind you to get prepared for the unthinkable because it is coming our way and we duly deserve it. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Don't forget today is a hollow day. It is a special day unto God and it should be a special day unto those that love and fear him. Thank you.